You're listening to the No Code Hustle, where we speak with founders, builders, and makers who are creating the next generation of tech products. I'm your host, Eric Israni. Welcome, everyone. I'm here with Brent Summers, builder of Give Local and the former founder of the Code Free Startup. Welcome, Brent. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you coming on and, and chatting with me today. Uh, let's get right into it. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your long history with Bubble? You've really been a user of Bubble for a long time. In fact, from the very beginning, you have been using and building on our platform. Yeah, I'd say um, it, it's crazy to think how far how, how far it's come and you know how long it's been. But I think, yeah, I, I got started with Bubble probably in early 2014. So probably a couple years after they started working and uh, building the product. And yeah, I, I was um, doing consulting at the time, helping startup founders c- get connected with technical folks to build their ideas and helping them kind of uh, learn the lingo. And around that time, I was um, increasingly, you know, trying to spread the word of, hey, not everyone needs to learn how to code. Around those, you know, around that time in 2014, that was kind of like the big message being sent out by everyone. It's like, hey, everyone should code. And what I really loved when I heard about Bubble was kind of the, the mantra of like, hey, it's probably not a great idea for everyone to code. What about people that need to just focus on the business who can also make something happen by building something themselves? So, um, yeah, you know, I, I found Bubble. Uh, I think someone sent it to me on my email list and then kind of the, the rest is history. That's great. And, and so it sounds like you already had this, this idea internalized that not everyone should code. It's exactly the mission of Bubble. And that's why you found this match, right? That's why you found that the bubble was really the answer for what you were trying to do. And yeah, it, it was it was really uh, it was really a product of what I was seeing a lot of at the time, which is the friction between these non technical founders and um, you know them working with a limited budget and also limited technical know how, trying to talk to developers and development teams. So. Everyone knows, you know, the story of the startup founder who goes out with ten thousand dollars, has an idea, hires like a, a dev team in India off Upwork or you know any anywhere, not singling out one location, but you know th- then the product comes back, then you know they uh, they have V one, they try to go back for changes, the dev team either disappears or jacks up the rates. So um, you know I I was dealing with a lot of. Uh, folks that had negative experience to the founders and they were really trying to figure out what can I do. Um, and that's when, you know, bubble kind of came along as this third solution of like, Oh wait, you know, if you do have a limited budget and you have time to invest in learning this tool yourself, you can actually build it, you know, yourself to get it off the ground. It's heartbreaking. The amount of people that I connect with and I ask, Hey, how'd you find bubble? And they're like, well, I spent thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on a developer didn't get what I wanted, didn't even come close. And I decided I was just going to do it myself. I was just going to grit it out, figure it out, see what's out there. And they luckily found bubble before they really just gave up. Um, Yeah, exactly. A lot of our original users are like super gritty uh, people who just, they they want to see this thing built. Um, and so tell me a little more about, about yourself. Were you coming from a tech background? You were, it sounds like you were working around tech people. Yeah, I was, um, I just left a startup at the time, but I was actually in a sales um, and marketing capacity there. Um, so I was kind of in this, this weird middle ground where I was somewhat technical, just self-taught. I, you know, built websites that going back to like the GeoCities days, um, you know, parents give you a computer, you, you fire it up and try to figure out how everything works behind the scenes. Um, so I could build basic websites and was familiar with like WordPress and stuff like that. But, um, but you know, really was not a competent developer at the time able to really build substantial apps. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's where I think when I first found Bubble, I, I really, I think my first instinct was, let's see how far I could push this thing. Um, and that's when I think I, I spent uh, an entire weekend building a clone of Airbnb um, just to see like, okay, you know, can I copy this page and how would this listing work? How would I dynamically create pages? And then when it all came together, I was really, I was pretty blown away. That's great. So your first project was Airbnb. And then after that, you went into educating people on Bubble. And so 
what drew you into being an educator? What drew you into learning as much about bubble as is required to even teach other people? Yeah, the the interesting thing was that um, I think, you know, bubble, because it was so far ahead of the curve with um, with the no code technology and just the uh, ability, especially the workflows tab that just like it clicked instantly. Um, I think, you know, when when initially shipping those features, it kind of outstripped the um, kind of the education that was really needed for people to realize what could be built. So I think as soon as I realized that this Airbnb app was working and, um, you know, and, and could be a, a legitimate startup, um, I, I started telling people about it and people were kind of like, whoa, how, how does that work? Is that real? And so I started immediately putting together some videos and realized, you know, that, hey, this could be a course um, just to kind of show off because I think this is when the bubble community was starting to come online and folks in the forum were, were starting to explore really just how, um, how, how the functionality could act, how, how it could actually take a, a project pretty far. And so um, that's, that's kind of how the, the code free startup got started was just with this Airbnb course. I put it out on the forum um, and a lot of people showed interest. And then I just kept building more and more courses um, from there and it grew. That's incredible. That's, you, uh, you're a real resource to the community. That's fantastic. And, and so you took that, you eventually, you sold that off, right? Is that the, yes. is that the proper that was, way to describe what happened? You, you sold it? Yeah. So, um, so I, I built the site up um, over about three to four years and um, we ended up having around 10 courses on there. Everything from building, you know, an Uber clone um, to Tinder to Yelp. And, um, and, you know, around 2018, I, um, I started talking to the folks at Zero Code. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, they've built out a really awesome template library and they were thinking about how to, um, start their education arm. So it made a ton of sense for them to acquire the code free startup and, um, and take the educational content I'd created and create zero code labs. So they've done a really great job with it, um, since then and, uh, couldn't be happier to see, you know, what, what their team's done. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're fantastic. They are multi time zone they are spread out all over the planet and they continue to pump out great work and yeah, so after definitely. that yeah so after that what did you where'd you go from there what happened, what came next uh so i'd say you know I, I i think um last year was really interesting because i had the opportunity to teach offline um so i did i did some work for the us uh, department of defense actually and um, was able to teach some courses on uh, UX design um, to folks in the military, um, a, a pilot program that they were working on. So um, that was a cool opportunity because you know I started to work on some other projects and I felt like I was missing teaching. So when this opportunity came up, I, I took it. And um, you know, ever since then, I've just been kind of just working on you know new things using Bubble, exploring different technologies out there. Um, you know, I think my uh, my mindset as a founder is usually just to try to solve my own problems, things that, you know, frustrate me and then see if other people will use them. So that's kind of how I go about it. So you taught bubble to the CIA. Okay. You don't have to say it. <laughs> can't, you can't print that. No. <laughs> <laughs> May have. We'll see. Awesome. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, when, when I see those, uh, I see entire countries get taken down by bubble apps. We'll, uh, I'll be looking at you. <laughs> yes, weaponized <laughs> bubble. <laughs> um, great, and so that leads us to the reason you and I got connected. What you know, what has been honestly a very short but incredible story about your most recent project. So you want to tell me a little bit about that and 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 how you got it and I, I, how you came yeah. up. Yeah, you know, let's start there. How did you come up with this idea? Yeah. So, you know, as you can tell with our, you know, Zoom backgrounds, probably more mine than yours, but, you know, we're, we're all, we're stuck at home currently in the middle of this pandemic. And, um, and so uh, really what happened was uh, my friend, Justin gave me a call um, a couple of weekends ago, I think three at this point and, um, and said, you know, Hey, like we're, we're both, we're both trapped inside. He's in Austin, Texas. I'm in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, California and um, you know we we want to see how hey how could we help out there's kind of a lot of uh, at, at this point a lot there was a lot of you know early reactions is this gonna be serious how serious is it gonna be um, and right around the time that we started talking about how can we help 
um, was when the first uh, quarantines and shelter in place um, alerts and notifications were going out to different counties. Um, and so we, we immediately thought of the local businesses and the restaurants that were kind of getting um, really hammered early on because, you know, all overnight their business was going from normal to zero. Yeah. So, um, so the idea came, you know, Hey, how can we get money to these restaurants to keep their doors open? Um, and, um, and we started just talking about different ideas. We'd seen some cool concepts that people had talked about on Twitter, whether it was, you know, uh, micro loans or something else, but we wanted to get something online fast. Um, because, you know, when the door's shut and rent is due, uh, you know, most restaurants really don't stand that much of a chance. And so selfishly, we were thinking of you know, all the great places in our neighborhoods that we wanted to stay open. Um, and going on their websites, we saw they had existing gift card URLs. Um, so we decided to come up with this uh, idea called Give Local, which was, um, hey, can we just create a directory of all these restaurants in different cities with their gift card URLs? So that really simple people can go click on the URL, buy a gift card, and you know that money goes to the restaurant right away. So it's great. So it's a way for people to prepay for the experience they want down the line because they know that if these guys don't make rent, if these restaurants go out, you won't be able to enjoy that excellent food in the future. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, just get the money to them ASAP. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you're being quite humble about you know, helping them and, and you having a personal stake in the matter, but it, it really is a fantastic instinct. And, and it's admirable that you had that. Your first thought was, hey, how do I help other people while this pandemic is going on? And it, honestly, I, I, I like to quote Mr. Rogers. It's, you know, you look for the helpers and that's exactly what, what you and your, your partner have been. And so it's called Appreciate Give that. Local. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's great. And Tell, I mean, you, you chose Bubble to build this, right? And so your, your history aside, what made you choose Bubble over some of the other tools that you've had experience with? Yeah, so what was interesting is, you know, when, when you're a startup founder and you're thinking about getting your idea out, um, you know, speed is already on the top of your mind, but in a pandemic, um, it like really just throws everything else out the window. Um, and so we we talked about building this i think uh, on a saturday afternoon and then we said let's build it on sunday and you know when you start talking about building something in a day that's really when you know bubble is kind of the the first thing that comes to mind um you know i i do know javascript and i i, I do um some development in node.js and react um but you know i i'd say i'm i'm still i'm 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 probably able to build an okay site in about a week um, maybe a web app in a couple of weeks uh, with, with those uh, traditional tools. Um, so uh, Bubble was was kind of the first thing that came to mind as far as, um, you know, let's get something up, let's get something out. And so in the span of about maybe six hours, we just hopped on a Zoom call like you and I are doing here and um, we just we just built it. That's great. That's So in six hours, you had something live, something helping people, something where people were clicking through and buying gift cards and yeah. So yeah. So what was interesting is we wanted to make this a community based site. And so the key to that was making it kind of uh, able to run by itself. And so the first thing I thought of with bubble that could make that happen is, is just, you know, creating um, different database entries for each restaurant. Um, and then we created a workflow when someone adds a restaurant um, so any user could basically click a link on the top, add their own restaurant, and then we use the Google Places API so that if um, that city had not yet existed in the database, it would actually automatically create that city. That city would have a page and that restaurant would be listed on the page. So that was kind of a, you know, a way for us to be like, okay, hey, in six hours, could we build something that then we could send out into the world and not have to, you know, be doing a lot of manual work ourselves. So those, that workflow is what allowed you to use the people who are coming to your site to further actually build your site. So you built yeah. the scaffolding and then everything else, like the, the way in which it grew was because people interacted with your site and added to it. Exactly, yeah, so it was really community-based and what we saw within, you know, we, we launched it on a Monday. I think within the first two days, we started to see, um, you know, uh, I think close to a thousand restaurants get added and, um, 
I think 70, when we looked at the data, 70% of them were added by restaurant patrons, 30% added by owners. Um, we had a little checkbox that you could say if, if you were own an owner of a restaurant um, or just a patron. And, um, and yeah, so it was, it was really awesome to see kind of people come together. And I think everyone kind of had that same instinct at that point of how can I help? Oh, I love these restaurants. Let me try to add them myself. Absolutely. People love to eat. And then <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. no. And, and, and it, it really feels like, you know, we've taken for granted, especially those of us who live, you know, close to or in major cities, um, you know, the ability to kind of leave your house and have just like amazing food close by. And, and um, you know, and, and some of my favorite uh, restaurants are family owned, small establishments where you just kind of you think of, of these folks that are all of a sudden, uh, basically just shut down. And, you know, it, it's great just to see everyone kind of hop on board and help out. Yeah. I'm heartbroken. I love nothing more than sitting outside and eating at a nice restaurant. And yeah. I, and I won't be able to do that probably for at least three or four months. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you just, you just, yeah, exactly. And when, when things do open up, um, you just, you know, you hope that you see all these restaurants actually reopen. Um, and the unfortunate truth is some of them won't. So we're just trying to see, Hey, anything that can help, um, you know, community-based, government-based, state, local, how can we kind of all chip in? Yeah. And so if you don't mind, let's, um, let's take a look at the actual site. Uh, I want to, you know, let's poke around a little bit, see, see what it looks like. And maybe we talk through that workflow one more time to, to see how it works in real life. Sure. Do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, I um, should have the ability to do that. Right. All right, so let me do one quick thing here. I like the design, very clean, very appealing, very approachable. Thanks. So yeah, so as you can see now, the, the site's kind of come a long way, um, and, but it really just kind of maintains this, um, you know, basic architecture of being able to add a location um, and being able to kind of see once you add a location in a city where um, everything is in the city. So um, what's, what's interesting is, you know, and why you kind of see the branding of USA Today is that um, within the first four days of us building this, we were approached by a number of different companies that offered to help us out. And, um, and one of them was USA Today. And they basically told us, you know, hey, we have um, a team of developers and obviously a huge reach with all these newspapers. So we partnered up with them. Um, and, uh, you know, they've basically been able to really spread the word and grow the platform um, you know, take it a lot farther than we could have. Um, and, uh, and so it's been pretty, pretty cool to see. So let's dig in on that a little bit while we're poking around the site. So inside a week, so you went Monday, you built the site, you and your partner spent six hours together working over zoom, collaborating, building the site day two and three, you were pushing it out on your personal news feeds on Twitter, um, getting more and more people involved. You got over a thousand people to contribute. And then on the fourth day, you got approached by USA Today about yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a pretty crazy couple of days. I uh, didn't get that much sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now you have this partnership with USA Today and they're pushing out the site you built on Bubble. They're pushing out the work that you did in, in a, a lonely Monday where you were stuck inside and chatting with your partner over Zoom. And now it's a, a national movement, it looks like. Like there are so many restaurants on here. Yeah, no, they've, they've done a really great job and they, they even, they added in some functionality, you know, if delivery's available, um, you know, but, but you can kind of see, see the, the main thing here that we created, which is, you know, it's very easy. Step one, you buy the gift card and that takes you to the link. Step two is you share on social media to spread the word. And step three is wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that was, that was the basic premise, but they've kind of added, you know, um, being able to order online if these places, uh, do support it. Um, but yeah, the, the functionality of just being able to kind of search and drill through down to a city is, has been pretty cool to see. 
Mm -hmm. And so this is a repeating group that pulls up the different locations and also has a dynamic number that tracks the amount of restaurants that are, are within it. Yes. Yeah. So this, this version of the site that's live today, um, their development team has supported it using a, a couple different things. And I think Elasticsearch is now the newest one, but um, I do have an archive version of the original site, the, the first site that we put out. Um, so this is, this is kind of V1 of the site, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is, I guess, crazy. It's like, you know, four, four, uh, five days prior to um, <laughs> the launch of V2. But yeah, basically to take, take you through it, you know, this is a repeating group here of searching for all the different cities that were in the database. Um, and then you click on the restaurants, which takes you to the city page. Um, you know, it grabs the city uh, from the path parameter um, and then displays all of the different shops um, here. And then when you go to buy a gift card, this is just a pop-up that, you know, the, with the parent group's information. Um, and then that it will send you to buy the gift card. And that's, uh, that's really all there is to it outside yeah. of, you know, being able to add a restaurant. Nice. And in that pop-up, you, you still had that, uh, wash your hands message, yes, exactly. which I want to reiterate, wash <laughs> your hands. Very important. <laughs> um, and so another, one more question about the way in which you organize is, did you, did you organize it by total number of restaurants in an area? Did you organize it by you know, alphabetically? How did you, how did you decide which cities to put forth? How to, you know, how did you? Yeah. So on, so them? on the homepage, we decided to uh, sort by just number of restaurants available. Um, and then we created a search page that just shows every single restaurant um, and uh, alphabetically with just a function to be able to type in your city um, and filter there. And, um, and then, you know, I think most importantly to the success of this was just being able to create a separate city page for each, um, each city, because we just wanted folks to be able to, when, um, when building this out, like, let's say we take the Atlanta page, we wanted people to be mostly sharing their individual city page because that would give, um, that would give us, you know, the ability to connect people with kind of the ultimate mission, which is, Hey, send this out to everyone else in Atlanta, get them to add and also to buy uh, gift cards for these places. Very smart. Yeah. Because that's, that seems to be the driving force behind this is people want to share and support their communities and giving them that option to share, not your homepage, but the pages that matter to them would certainly drive that, that, you know, that viral growth that you saw. Um, yeah. And so I want to, I want to step back for a second to something you said earlier. So this is V1 and five days later you put V2 out. Yeah. So V2, um, V2 was, you know, really a, um, a product of the USA Today development team. Um, they were really great to work with, you know, with, when partnering up and, you know, we were starting to see uh, just a few, you know, scaling issues as we had, I think, 30,000 folks, um, you know, on the site, uh, you know, just just going by very rough analytics. Um, and, you know, so some functionality like, you know, going to the search page, once we hit a certain amount of, um, you know, calls, we had to add in pagination and uh, and just see, you know, what what database lookups were going to be expensive. So, um, you know, they had some really great ideas as far as you know you can see there's um pagination and also uh you know the map functionality where you kind of click in to go right to a website for a restaurant apparently that one's not working but um <laughs> no but that's that's fantastic and that always I and mean, it always impresses me when people go from version to version with a bubble and they just constantly are upping their game and it's it's so rewarding because you can see almost in real time how people are growing their businesses and incorporating the feedback from the community and the feedback, honestly, from their own coworkers, right? Whatever the, the team is they're working on, they want to improve this product. You can do it at lightning speeds. Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, within the first two days that we launched, I was just getting bug reports on, you know, Twitter uh, as folks were on the site. And so let's say, you know, one, one was an interest. I think the, the most interesting bug was 
we were using the Google Places API to um, to you know create the city name. Uh, and the first person who tried to add, I think it was in uh, Quebec City, um, the special character E, you know, broke the whole system. So all of a sudden, I had to, you know, I I ran into Bubble, where I ran into the workflow, did a find and replace, and deployed it. Um, and it was just, you know, kind of kind of just a lot of that really really quick actions to um, to make the site work. But yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely a lot easier just be you know being really comfortable with Bubble and um, just kind of the speed of development. That's incredible. It, it really is. And so now that you've got this partnership and this project is kind of taken on a life of its own, have you thought about what comes next? Yeah. So uh, I'm still bouncing around ideas. What, what's, what's crazy is how in the span of three weeks, you know, the world seems like a very different place, um, you know, as far as where people need help. So um, yeah, thinking, thinking through other ways to help, whether it's, you know, in response to, um, the need for masks or for protective equipment, um, you know, uh, what life is going to be like after this, uh, this uh, once people are able to leave their houses and what that looks like. So just thinking through some things. But, you know, in the meantime, I have plenty of other projects that, um, you know, uh, are keeping me busy in bubble um, and outside of it. So just, uh, you know, like I said before, working on solving a lot of problems, most of my own. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. And honestly, I, I, I anticipate great things from you, right? Your first instinct was to go back and help your community. And so I imagine that your future projects will also be mission driven, uh, things that, that are going to help everybody and you're going to do them quickly. Yeah, I, I hope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it definitely felt good to, to kind of, you know, focus my energy on, um, on, on, on kind of a community project like this. And, you know, I, I've, I've always thought, you know, you know, when you see the success of a lot of different community platforms and, you know, even the bubble forum and how many people are active there, it really shows you kind of the, the power of, of a content based site if you're able to get folks engaged and helping, helping out. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to create another community site at some point. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And so I'd like to ask you, a couple more questions before I let you go. As a as an educator, I'm interested in your answer to this. What are some of the things that you think people who are getting started on Bubble usually don't understand? There's some kind of misconception around, or, or they really struggle with that you found is easily dispelled, or, or something that you know you'd love to dispel right now. Yeah, uh, that's that's interesting. I think the from from someone who is completely non technical and they jump into bubble for the first time. I think that the, the view, um, basically the design panel clicks right away because everyone's used a website. And I think that um, where the first real stumbling blocks happen and in my experience is, um, is that th there's really no mental model that people have to kind of connect the database and workflows tab to the design tab. So um, I think one of the earliest areas I started with in some of my courses was just talking about model view controller development and, you know, how, you know, basically a database is nothing more than a glorified spreadsheet. And, you know, if you think about just a, a controller being able to push and pull those things out of a spreadsheet, um, it, it makes it a little bit easier to understand and digest. But, um, but yeah, I think, you know, when, when someone first jumps into bubble and they think like, oh, I can design a web page, but how do I, how do I make it, you know, different than a web page? I think that's when, you know, the, the, the light bulb really doesn't click for a lot of folks until they've seen a workflow that gets something out of the database and then changes what they see on the actual bubble site. Okay. And so that's, I mean, that's fantastic. That's, I see that a lot and that's a great way to put it. Right, especially with the idea of bringing data up, bringing those things up into your site. Um, and so if you had to give some advice to someone on the entrepreneurial side of things, people who want to try and build a business, people who are looking to take their bubble app and really have an impact on the community around them, what advice would you give them? I'd say, you know, we're, we've talked a lot about speed um, and the thing that makes bubble so powerful is that the speed of development can then lead to speed of launch and iteration. Um, and so the, the number one mistake I see first time entrepreneurs make is they, they, don't, they don't use the speed in the right, right way, 
which is they spend you know months and months fiddling with their app because they want to get it perfect before launching. And then you know the the dreaded uh, thing happens where you launch something that no one actually wants to use because it's not easy or it's not no one understands it. So I think I think that's probably the most important thing to remember is to um, just use bubble speed to the, the to actually get that advantage when it comes to getting something out there fast. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, our uh, you know I, I've launched really really ugly looking V ones and you know they as long as they connect and, and there's something valuable there, people are willing to, you know, uh, put up with a certain amount of jankiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my favorite button in bubble is that deploy button. Just send it out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Send it, send it and, uh, and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you can always fix it. All right. You can always add to it. You can always iterate. And, you know, as you very recently experienced that, it doesn't have to be this beautiful, glamorous, perfect site. You can accomplish a lot of good in a very short period of time if you're willing to commit to your, your mission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's really what it's all about is just, you know, being able to hone in on what that problem is that you're solving and actually focus on solving it versus, you know, getting sucked into, oh, I want to make a really nice app that's completely polished. Because, you know, if you build the most polished app that, you know, you've spent a few months building, that's a couple months that, you know, the problem could have been solved if you made something that just worked on the first week. Yeah. And something that works is more important than I think anything else, right? Because that's the other thing I see a lot of is you spend so much time trying to get those pixels perfect and it doesn't do what you want it to do. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's true. The, 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 only, uh, the only caveat there, I will say, is that um, for especially consumer products, um, if you're launching to a, con- a consumer market and you're, you know, gearing up for a launch on Product Hunt or Hacker News, um, I, I have seen in a trend in the last few years where sites that, especially the homepage, uh, you know, if the landing page homepage does not look pixel perfect, people see that as a knock on the credibility and so um, may not sign up. So I think, you know, there's, there's, it's all a balance. And so a certain amount of making something that works, making a, a good looking homepage that at least checks the credible box as someone's willing to sign up, um, you know, because there is, I think, the other extreme of you build something uh, that has absolutely no design input and uh, you send it out and then, you know, everyone thinks that it's going to give their computer a virus if they put their, you know, email in. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's always a balance. I think that's absolutely spot on. You don't want something that looks ancient from 2000. Uh, otherwise you're just going to get, uh, you're not going to get anyone. Right. But yeah. to, your, to your point though, with product hunt and with, with some of these other places, one piece of advice I've gotten, which I think is very valuable to our community and, and to people who are building is you can launch multiple times, right? Until you're the size of like Google, until you're enormous, like Facebook, and even them, they launch new products all the time and they do multiple launches when the first ones don't really get the attention they think they deserve. Mm-hmm. And so there's nothing stopping you from holding off on product time, but still launching your product and getting some yeah. feedback and iterating totally. and improving. And then, you know, getting to a point where you're ready for the big time, where you're ready for the show. Yeah, I think that's great advice because I think if you, if you think of like a launch as a singular event, uh, it can kind of grow in your mind and become this big mental block and oh if i'm launching you know there's only one shot it has to be perfect so thinking about multiple launches is is probably a a much better framework absolutely and and so your website even your v1 that was still very clean do you have any closing thoughts on some design tips for people on keeping things looking clean and and finding that balance yeah i'd say I'd say probably the the best design advice I've ever gotten is to um, to always start with more white space than you think you need um, because most most design if you if you look at you know things that uh, you know even if you don't have a ton of design experience you can tell things that have started off where everything's too squished and it just doesn't look professional um, and when, when when starting out on a blank page if you actually really space out the elements. Um, it's, it's much easier to kind of go bring things in than to, uh, do the opposite. So 
you know, I think when, when I design a page in bubble, that's kind of, that's my go-to. I just space everything out, make uh, start to align things based on, you know, grid, but I give things plenty of white space because it's just, it's a lot more pleasing to the eye. And, um, and so that's been pretty helpful to me. Great. I mean, it shows, right? Your V1 again was great. It was very trustworthy and approachable and yeah, overall, I think you've done some great stuff. I, I was, it's a pleasure speaking with you and I'll give you one last chance. Do you have any closing thoughts, anything you want to share that maybe I should have asked about and didn't? Uh, no, I think, I think we covered a, a good amount. Um, you know, I think uh, I appreciate you in, inviting me on and it was great to chat. Um, and I think, you know, just in the future, um, you know, I'll, I'll continue to share bubble projects that come up and, um, yeah, it's, it's always, always great interacting with the, the engaged community over there. Absolutely. Please do. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you for coming on the show and I'm really looking forward to what comes next. Great. Thanks so much, Eric. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. Be sure to rate us wherever you listen to us. Find me on Twitter at Eric is running and send me your no code hustle. There's nothing I love more than seeing you all tear down the barriers between real problems and tech-enabled solutions, all without code.